guys, welcome to our studio visit. So um, for the ones just joining, um, please remember to mute yourself. And uh, towards the end, we're going to have a Q&A. And uh, by the time, feel free to unmute yourself, talk to the artists, and talk to our moderators directly to interact, to exchange ideas. Uh, I'm Anchi, I'm the Curator of Education and Public Programs at Parasite. And today, we're very happy to have Kitty Cosington here to, have, uh, to do our student visit. And this is Kitty. And I also want to make a special introduction of our two guest moderators today. Um, we have Gyun from Philippines and also Christine from Hong Kong. Um, both are our current participants of our online workshops for emerging arts professionals. So uh, the program years this year cannot really take place in Hong Kong, but we have this great opportunity of um, you know, working with everybody online and also having um, our participants moderating um, the upcoming um, studio visits uh, with our Hong Kong-based artists. So before we start, maybe you and also Christine can introduce a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Gwen. I'm, I'm in Manila, Philippines right now. So um, in, in the Philippines, I work as, a, as an independent curator and an art writer. I'm really happy to uh, moderate this uh, studio visit with Kitty and learn more about her practice and, you know, together with Christine. Thank you, Gwen. Christine? Hi, I'm Christine. So I'm from Hong Kong and well, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to join Parasite in this program because while well, my previous training and what I'm working informed a strong interest on um, writing and curatorial work. So I would definitely hope through this opportunity I can know more about um, Kitty's work, of course, and as well as to know more people in related fields to explore how might I continue my journey as a writer and a potential creator in future, in the future. Yeah, nice to meet you all. Thank you. So for Kitty's introduction, I will leave um, um, the space for you and Christine to, you know, lead our lead us into the conversation. Yeah, 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 sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I, I'm Ko Sin Tong. Yeah, and um, I, let me maybe talk about uh, my practice a little bit because um, yeah, as Christine and also Gwen is uh, speaking a little bit and um, I am also very happy to talk with them. And uh, my practice in B is, um, I would say, very diverse. So today maybe I am sharing my practice by project by project, but that may not include a lot of them. But um, I try to show um, uh, more to let you see more and, and we can discuss and uh, together. So do you want to um, start sharing your screen, Kitty? Or? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, because uh, even though it's a uh, studio visit and um, I am quite embarrassed that I didn't really uh, working any solid things, but um, I, I, I can show my studio for you to take a look at that. Okay. And I have a lot of uh, work that is inside uh, uh, cardboard. <laughs> and uh, so basically I would like to share a little bit um, of what I am doing recently. Um, in B, I have been kind of like taking pictures around the city or, yeah, that is something that I normally do um, for, I, I have uh, a, a, an album that, uh, re uh, of the photo that I take regularly. So I would be uh, starting with that for showing you um, some of the pictures that uh, it may be snapshots that I take um, uh, every day that some of them may transform further into um, some of my work, but some may be just random, random one. So right now I would be sharing my screen and you can see 
uh, all of the images I want to show you. And um, yep, is it okay now? You can see the screen, right? Yes. And um, so I am gonna enlarge them. Hmm. For the images that I regularly collect, that may uh, I would I have selected like three category to uh, show to all of you. These is starting with some objects that I come across daily that may make me think it is interesting. Then I usually would take photo of them, <laughs> and um, also may somehow inspire me uh, for that moment. Mm. You can see random stuff that may be small object and maybe about space that right now you can see some larger scale, uh, the, the invention of the space or it is like, uh, I've also uh, have another type that is uh, more about some uncommon space that this one may be, uh, it is documenting an empty space that I come across. Then I take the photos and um, usually it attracts me as an uh, empty space that you can see the, the uh, how raw it is, and also uh, some others, like um, this is in Diamond Hill, that because something new is being built um, for the like the the new train station, so all the metal board is being uh, constructed to to make a path for people to to walk. And um, these images is also in a uh, translation that it cover everything and then maybe some renovation is going. And um, yeah. So most, most, of, most of the sites are sites of construction, right? Like they are under construction. Yeah, somehow. And um, some is maybe they have a uh, specific, uh, like this one is the car wash. <laughs> and, and yeah, uh, construction site is an other type of um, interest of me that I have taken a bunch of photos of construction area, just like this right. one and all these. Because I think construction site is having so many things to see, so many things that um, uh, inspire me. Like but these. The construction site, is it particularly related to the idea of like a temporary moment or like a site of mediation in a way? Yeah, exactly. Just when I am thinking of the uh, characteristic of a construction site, that why it is so uh, interesting to me is because um, I think I developed this interest or I realized I am interested into it is it is around 2012 at the time I was doing an exhibition. And then um, when I am looking at one Role repairing work that I am thinking, oh, the workers started to um, put on the barrier. And then it seems that it developed a boundary that you can do everything destructive uh, inside. Like they can dig a big hole, they can um, expose, uh, they, they can um, show all the water pipe and then they can leave everything overnight and um, it seems that if you once um, make the boundary people can tolerance everything that it is being chaotic and also mm. yeah like this it 
make me feel that it is very strange. On the same time, um, when I am thinking why people will accept all these um, harm, harmful uh, treatment to the land is maybe because of they have an impression that um, they, they know that things will be better in the future. That because the whole process, after the whole process, they would have some, something new, some new facility and some, uh, something that is like permanent. Uh, I mean, it can last a longer period that is um, better for their life. So they, on the same time, having expectation in it. So for me, the, the character is very strong and it kind of like create a, a dilemma in it. And um, so right now I, I can start to talk about some of my work that is um, sometimes related to the materials that I have been showing. And um, I would be starting with um, the show, I the solo show at, that I have been that I've done last year in Evermelon Gallery, and um, it is called Adaptation. The title of it, and uh, this show is about maybe I go full screen first. Okay. So this show adaptation is about changes, I would say, mainly about changes of environment. And um, uh, it's also related somehow back to the, um, the impact of construction site that it create some temporary moment. But when we are facing some frequent changes, I feel that um, it is somehow difficult for me to really accept new things when you think the, the forthcoming future is not that good. And um, so it's kind of, um, I would say, reluctant to, to move forward. So in this exhibition, you can see I have use different kind of work to kind of like uh, um, freeze a certain moment of changing. Yeah. So when, uh, this one is the uh, exhibition entrance. As you can see, I, um, cre uh, I have designed a L-shaped wall that, which is a part of another work. But when you go in, uh, go to the exhibition, you can um, see this small piece of work first. This one is a small photographer, photography of um, a, a small blue tag. That um, it for me is kind of like pinpointing the whole status of the the situation that uh, my exhibition want to focus. And um, this uh, is kind of like having a small, small story behind that I, during the exhibition period, I keep a small blue tag on my table that I somehow play with it and um, kind of like use it to, to uh, um, uh, kill your time when you are having nothing to do. And um, so time, but time by time it becomes dirty, but I didn't really notice. When I have to use the blue tag, I don't remember if I have to stick something or, or um, any, any other purpose. And I try to add some more to it. And when I add some more to it, I, I, I realized that, oh, the original one, which is already uh, very dirty, <laughs> and um, it has the color different. So when I... Um, try to mix them together, it creates the form that right now you can see 
in the photo. And then you can see the color difference. So at that time when I am looking at it, I, I, I feel that, oh, this is the a moment that I want to capture. And yeah, so that's why I create the, uh, create this work. So, and also I want people to, to see this work when they enter the exhibition. It's the first work. <laughs> can everyone maybe okay. mute the yeah can you could you please uh can everyone please uh, mute your microphones while kitty is doing the presentation <laughs> thank you let's see if it's if anything occur like that and um, yeah, so when you um, enter the exhibition and then turn right, you can see the whole um, exhibition space. And um, you can realize that, oh, at the end of the L-shaped wall, there is um, a small, small things. So this is the, uh, this is another work that they are the mold that used for um, um, creating maybe concrete sculpture that people use it maybe in the garden or rooftop or some other um, uh, architectural uh, uh, yeah, like building something and um, the, for this work uh, when I am thinking about um, a, a temporary moment that I am willing to use the mold uh, to create the sculpture and let the mold become the sculpture itself. So um, I try to insert uh, the, the mold into the, the wall and um, some other, this one is a feng shui sphere. And um, the other one like this is a flower pot that I um, make a, a pedestal for it and then some other like this i try to this one this too is uh for molding a pillar uh a big pillar that you can see this one have the decoration onto it it is somehow a little bit uh chinese style and um so these work um is located around different locate uh, spaces uh, different different corner maybe in the exhibition site so um, for the wall you can see there is different uh, work that hanging on the wall and actually this series I have also wait like having an other kind of method to display it this one is leaning against the wall. And um, so for the images, it is uh, some prints that I uh, have printed out of the photos that are taken in construction area. As you can see, these are the reference that it is a really big construction site in Hong Kong. And I I've taken many photos of these. Um, you can see the negative space is what I am focusing on. And the negative space, as you can see in the reality, it is because it's still constructing. So it doesn't have um, a lot of lighting inside. So it is very dark. And when I am making the work, I try to make them all black and white and then also make a color reverse so that all the darkest part become the lightest part. And mm -hmm. um, under this idea, uh, also because of the concrete is still gray in color. So I want to have the focus only on the like very abstract form of a white part. And after I print 
uh, the image on the canvas. And then I have adding some uh, little, I would say it's a abstract form of um, some color block that you can see. They are some um, like, like simulation of um, the, like maybe fut uh, uh, there is something being built in the future. So I try to adding some, something inside that area by a quite abstract form to, to like uh, painting some color block into that space. Mm -hmm. And um, when I am doing the setup of this exhibition, I uh, also uh, create the, the present, uh, presentation way to leave it like this, because this is quite familiar. Like when you are going to hang a painting, you will put the foam underneath and then this one is also covered by the plastic sheet that it is being protected now. And um, so when I am seeing the, the, the way it is, I think it is also very suitable for, for um, like not hanging uh, on the wall, but keep it like that to strengthen the feeling of, oh, everything is in the process. And um, I just want to, uh, this this exhibition is actually inside a gallery space, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of like created a construction site inside the the white space. Um, it seems something like that, but I didn't really make uh make it too messy. And um, <laughs> yeah, so you can see the whole uh, <laughs> exhibition menu is like this and you can see something on the ground something is on the wall and then also in the corner there is uh, the work of the, the the mold yeah and um there is two little uh, uh sculpture of a, a row sign that i in the adding many layers of um stickers that is uh semi-transparent so when it is being added to a certain kind of thickness, it created the feeling that it is being frozen. And um, it somehow fit the concept of um, the intention that I want to keep something um, static and also keep something stayed in uh, that moment. And um, also the the this uh, black black one is the G claim that people use it to like like if you have if you need to glue the wood then you have to use uh, give pressure by the G claim so yeah it help it to stand and um, about the whole. Uh, there is another work that you must encounter after going into the exhibition venue is the 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 drywall wall <laughs> that I paint the whole exhibition space um, all the white wall into the the drywall effects that I try to imitate um, a in, in maybe a house or maybe the construction, the indoor area that is um, before they turn into a white wall that the workers have to uh, yeah, make everything flat and um, yeah. So it directly gives the audience a, uh, uh, an illusion that they were entering a space that is still not yet finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the intention is as simple as that. <laughs> and also like the, this feeling of um, kind of like the place is kind of frozen. Mm, that, is, that is somehow the tone or the, the, 
the visual elements, the visual feeling that I want the exhibition to provide. Um, I remember you said before that whenever you do an exhibition, there's you always tend to kind of like um, put a temperature to the exhibition, right? Yeah, um, um, I would say, yeah, because we've uh, have the conversation with, uh, I have the conversation with Christine and Grant before that I mentioned that when I am doing the exhibition, I try to um, think whether my exhibition should create a temperature <laughs> for it. Yeah, so um, the temperature may be uh, cold or it, because that's my personal, personal like aesthetic choice. I, I and also it, it is um, uh, also depends on the content that I would like this exhibition to be slightly, uh, it create a cold feeling, but maybe when you compare it with the others that you can see the difference. That maybe the next one I'm going to talk about is even more cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Question. Um, like you've mentioned that you really um, usually set a temperature for an exhibition. So mm -hmm. in particular for this space, because it is a com it is a commercial gallery. Mm. For any like maybe like audience might have been to this place before I bet for like various exhibitions so mm. the idea that for example like you have painted the walls or alter the space or to create a relatively cooler temperature and to create a sort of like I would say it is an unfamiliar familiarity like people mm. familiar with the space that from the very second they step in it might be some sort of familiar mm. so I'm, how how might this setting or this idea potentially inform on your exploration of subtle violence um for this exhibition i um um as we talked before i want uh, maybe the the exhibition can i mean um, not every not every exhibition I want to um, emphasize on the subtle violence, but um, for this one, maybe it created by the, also the images of the construction and also it, because the whole setting is um, like being constructing and it already gives you that kind of feeling that make me, maybe it more related to the situation of Hong Kong, like how, um, like every day when you were seeing things is uh, destructive and having, having, maybe it's about political or social issues that is having the violent inside, but for this exhibition, maybe it it is being uh, converted by the these kind of frozen moment. Um, if you are joining the the city of visit, please put your microphones on mute because we can hear a little bit of background music, uh, background sound from some of the. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. so we move to the next exhibition, Kitty, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe I can talk a little uh, more about um, why do I choose to do some work that is maybe um, having a big impact on space. Uh, because usually I like uh, one of the reason is I think as an audience to go to an exhibition, I like things to be uh, 
fresh. I mean, <laughs> because you face the same uh, exhibition venue. And um, somehow I would like to create something having more impact to the audience that they could uh, having a more unfamiliar feeling for, for them to see the work I am uh, giving them to see. And um, somehow also the, the other reason is that every time when I'm doing exhibition is like an, a, a opportunity, an opportunity for me to um, play with the space or experiment mm -hmm. with the space. So I am going to share with you another exhibition that is uh, also involved a lot of uh, space intervention. This one is also a solo exhibition that I do last year, early last year. This is called Dust and Trivial Matters. And the space is in Beijing. This is the art space named the bunker. And it is really a bunker. As you can see right now that the, pic, uh, the image is the entrance of the bunker. And um, the other side is the floor plan that the bunker is actually contains uh, five rooms that you can see the, actually the door is right here and here that all the doors is like in a straight line. And then when you enter the fifth room, the door is right here in the opposite side. And um, so when I go to site visit and, and when I am thinking about this exhibition, the first um, thought is I want to create a path that linking the fourth room together. And um, so the outcome is like this. I create, uh, I use aluminum frame and also mount some um, plastic film. It's, uh, it's semi-transparent uh, plastic film mm -hmm. that they are all mounted in the ceiling and also for the whole structure. So this is the second room. For the treatment of the four, uh, the first four room, they are similar. That you can see all the uh, metal structures and you can see uh, behind the plastic, these are the objects that I put for the setting. So the audience can only walk in the path that they can only see, but not, uh, but, but they didn't have any chance to really touch anything in the fall, uh, first fall room. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, I would separate uh, the materials into two categories for the things I've been put inside. I mean, I mean inside is like behind the plastic film. That they are secondhand objects that I collect in, that I buy and found in Beijing. And um, like these, the it is the iron uh, bed frame. And then also mm -hmm. this is some decoration. And you can see these is the fish tank. Oh, there's a list of um, secondhand objects that I've been used. And, um, and I have put these objects in an organized way on different kind of, like this one is on the stainless steel table. And the previous one you see is on the uh, uh, trolley for surgical use. And, okay. Within this uh, area, you can see uh, I have three videos that showing different process that I have been doing to these secondhand objects. Mm -hmm. So these are the video still of the three videos. And maybe right now I can play 
the third videos and then I can talk more about that. So the video I'm showing is not too long. Yeah. As I said before, that is, um, I have different process. First of all, um, I have cleaned the second hand object. And then the second video showing I, I am sending the second hand object. And this one is the third one that I am using the cotton swaps to mm -hmm. indeed painting some blue color onto the edge. This one is a, uh, the brown one is the rubbish bin, is a rubbish bin. And um, why it is like this? Because I have uh, cut all the secondhand object. Uh, I mean, I have cut away a certain part of the secondhand object. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have to send it afterward. I have these result of a certain part of the object is being uh, taken away. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as you can see in the video, I have to um, like put in colors onto the object. Actually, every object that I display in the exhibition venue, it also have the same treatment. Like certain part is being cut and then mm -hmm. the remaining part is being uh, color only on the cross section, the edge. And uh, for me, this action, I want, um, uh, this action remind me a little bit of um, adding iodine on, on a wound. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, applying something on the, on the cut, kind oh. of like applying something on the wound, like trying to heal that part that was cut. I, I, uh, at that moment, I didn't think of healing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it's somehow um, uh, something that cannot return. Okay. And um, yeah, so this video is, yeah, gonna finish like, like um, after the whole process. And mm. yeah, maybe I... I mm. How does this idea of like a secondhand treatment, because you've mentioned that it's like the cross session. Mm. So when you have done like your own way of treatment to these objects that you have bought or collected secondhand. Mm. So how might this experience or like this experimental gesture um, mm. like contribute to your exploration of the notion of materiality? Um, at first, I when I am planning because I do the uh, setting up of the exhibition for a month that I am staying in Beijing, and at that time I didn't really um, I I know what I am going to find in Beijing because I only have the target to to find some secondhand object, and um, I do the selection when I go to the different market and um, our, because it contains of different kind of material that some of them is wood some of them is plastic and um, and also maybe uh, the fish tank is the glass that I indeed need some people to help me to <laughs> dissect it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, somehow I would say it's a little bit difficult for me to yeah. control at that moment. Mm -hmm. I, I am, I'm just observing from watching the video that the way, I mean, in, in your works, um, we usually see a lot of structures. We don't usually see people or, you know, the that part of like, humanity that is attached to the structures but like in this particular video the 
the the way that the color is being applied on the material has that that um, has has that feeling that sense of um, tenderness. Is that something that you <laughs> wanted to show, or is just I mean the timing of of that, the rhythm of the, of how you were applying the color to the material? Um, maybe. Not my intention, I would say. But I understand why you um, would have the feeling after seeing the video. What I am thinking is I want to keep things more neutral. And mm. um, maybe somehow it's like, uh, because I don't want to show my own face or I just want to show my hand. But um, on the same time, I like to put on white gloves because it all started because when I filming my own hand, I think it's too bony and too thin. <laughs> and <laughs> so it's not good looking. And so that's why uh, the first video, I, I've been taking several video that wear a white gloves. And um, for me, when I am having the experience of taking video by, by wearing a white glove, that is somehow more comfortable for me to, to visually get more comfortable. And also when I am doing the, the filming, it also made me more more serious in doing that. Maybe it's more like a performance or an act. Yeah. Or a ceremonial in a way, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it all started because of some accident. <laughs> and um, yeah, but somehow it, it is quite suitable for, for the context of this exhibition that I am creating something like a clean room and also it emphasizing, uh, emphasizing something really clean and organized and, and like a sh uh, surgical uh, space and yeah. So when we go back to the exhibition, because there is the most important part that is the fifth room that is totally different, I would say, because you cannot see the structure anymore. And uh, when you go into the fifth room, you can only see the, the air ducts. There's five air ducts. Uh, and each of them is regularly releasing some powder. And also I've put a bloom right there. And yeah, this is the other side. A close up of the, 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 I would say, uh, I would name it uh, the dust. <laughs> yeah, the powder, is, uh, the dust is indeed uh, a, a, a result of the treatment. I mean, um, it's a, 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 encounter of the secondhand object again that I've been cutting a certain part of the secondhand object away and then I find a company help me to gather them together to grind them all into small powder that mm -hmm. you can see it now it is being put into the uh, air ducts and then it release again, that the audience can really face it. There's some strange noise again. <laughs> and then, um, and then you mentioned like the broom, right? Like the presence of the broom and the, um, yeah. and the broom. What, what is there is, what is the use of that in the, uh, exhibition? Uh, it, it, it is in, a more open, <laughs> open uh, choice that the audience can um, sweep the floor anytime if they want. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, an also an 
unplanned uh, um, decision that I made. And of course, like this exhibition is a, is a site specific um, work. Uh, and maybe, and also like there's, you were saying something about having a show that, that really presents um, cleanliness, but also like in a way there is something sinister about that level of cleanliness. Maybe, maybe you can um, explain a little bit more about, about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I would say the core of this exhibition is um, emphasizing, emphasizing uh, the concept of clean, cleanness. And also, um, you kind of like enter a space that is being protected. But um, you see everything is uh, clean and protected, but it is uh, there is some process is being hidden and those are the process that may use to uh, cover some evil intention. That is the uh, subtle violin I am, I am going to foc uh, I focus on this exhibition, just like Christine mentioned before that maybe it become more obvious in this exhibition because of the grinding process that I want the audience to, um, maybe when they, when they uh, see the first, when they enter the first four room that mm -hmm. they didn't realize what I am doing, but I want to build up the linkage that uh, or giving them hints to understand oh, when you enter the fifth room. So you will wonder what is the, the small uh, dust because the exhibition title mentioned about dust. So you think, um, what is it? And um, I want them to try to figure out, oh, uh, by, by the videos I am showing, or they, they can develop that by themselves. And you can sense the, the, the process that behind. And this, um, and this exhibition is in a bunker space in Beijing, right? Yes. Right, so following, following up was question and your explanation just now. Well, actually, <laughs> since I didn't get to visit the exhibition in person, but as you have walked us through um, the ideas or how how you intend to mediate the entire experience, well, I got a very uncanny feeling or like <laughs> the very paradoxical moment when you've mentioned that the first four rooms are mm. really so clean, so protective. For example, you were related to clean room, gloves, surgery room. So it kind of gave me the impression like everything is handled with care or as mm -hmm. you said, is a space of protection and care. But at the end of it, like to the very fifth room, everything is just rendered as dust. Yeah. <laughs> so the end result is, end result after all those care and protection or dust powder. So, well, on top of like, um, alongside your your continuous experimentation with site specificity reality. I'm curious because these two keywords have been, I would say, a common denominator between mm. the solution in Hong Kong as mm. well as this one and the bunker in Beijing as well. So I was wondering how how had the idea of city, like apart from particular the exhibition site, the idea of the locality of different cities has informed your interpretation or the way how you intend to um, share with the audience of the idea of sight and subtle violence. Yeah. Yeah, for me, when I um, visit the space in Beijing and also about the uh, Beijing, this city, I would sense that there is a strong, for me, the most, um, direct feeling is 
uh, you know is the capital and you know there is power so you can feel that um, there is a really big contrast between people and so it become uh, a an extreme like small and big uh, uh, contrast when you think of the the the, the power and um, also these are the thoughts that I try to um, subtly involved in the exhibition when I consider it as the background of how like uh, uh, when when I have to think of what should I do in the bunker space um, beside looking at the bunker uh, for me bunker is a very interesting space that is on the same time giving some uh, a sense of danger and mm -hmm. also um, it also have the, the protective um, uh, uh, function uh, characteristic so in a way that bunker pro provide me these elements and also when I am thinking about this exhibition to be located in Beijing these are the elements that group together that make me create the exhibition. So when I am doing exhibition in Hong Kong, I would be more like, um, I would say it would be more easier as I am yeah, always living in Hong Kong, but on the mm. same time, it is more complex because you you are more familiar you know more problem of this city that it may somehow giving me, me more angles mm. yeah for for creating the artwork mm. well so following your explanation i'm curious like well because you've shared with us earlier on like the way how you um, your daily practice or your mode of research is to take photographs of your daily observation that you find interesting. So in that case, well, how many sociopolitical changes or like the dynamics in Hong Kong from last year to right now will actually provide nuances or impact it on your observation or understanding of places or spaces as the site of mediation or temporary barriers? Um, yeah, in, of course, there is many frustration and, and emotional, like up and down and all these since last year. And, um, I didn't really tell it this mo uh, at this moment because I, I, I have exhibition, um, in last year, but I didn't really kind of like thinking of a whole body of work mm. since that period. So it's, for me, it's still quite difficult to say, but I can imagine maybe things would be more extreme for, for any presentation way, or I don't know, it's <laughs> right now at this moment, it's difficult to, <laughs> to to make any judgment for me. Yeah. I am not so confident about it also. I mean, when I am doing my art practice. Yeah, so um, maybe I can show a little more, maybe one to two project before we don't have enough time. Like talking about the yeah as i said before uh, i'm interested in doing uh, experiment in the exhibition venue this one is a more more simple project i would say because the exhibition venue is not so big um it is also a small space that located in hong kong it is called holy motor and um as you can see the space is only 
the the storefront of a a uh, motorcycle repairing shop, and um, and also the you can see you cannot really enter the space because this they are. Uh, 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 yeah, you can see the glass and the door is locked. So um, I try to, I just make three neon that um, running all the time in the exhibition period. But the neon have the tags uh, close 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So this is somehow representing some of the, the, the feeling that when I am walking at the midnight within that area, that you can always see oh, some shop is telling you their existence, even if they are closed. So um, I want to create the, the, the for me, this uh, gesture is very, overbearing that um, yeah it, it seems like to me that oh you have used like advertisement you have used um, every method to let people know your existence <laughs> so the concept is simple and this um, this exhibition is is it's actually inside an actual store, right? Like it's yeah, not an I, art space. It is not an art space, but the owner at that time just loved the space and then he rented it and tried to make it into an art space that he um, invited artists to do whatever they like in that small area. <laughs> is, it, um, is it more difficult for you uh, to work with a space that you already have a relationship with rather than, for example, like the bunker in, um, in Beijing that's in a different city where you're not, uh, where you don't live, um, as opposed to all the sites in, in Hong Kong, whether inside an actual gallery or like in a non-art exhibition space like, like, like a motor store. Um, which is it that you find more difficult and how do you um, how do you really, you know, kind of like build that relationship with the structure if it's in a city that is uh, foreign or unfamiliar? Um, for me, the exhibition space, I don't really, um, I mean, whether it is commercial or it is an artist run space doesn't affect too much, I would say. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's more, um, important is the characteristic of each space. For example, as I am showing the project before, this one is really, okay, yeah, this one is really small and um, it is in the street that every uh, um, uh, uh, people walk by and then you can sense the existence of it. So every time when I am encountering different kind of space, I would think in that way, like what should be suitable for putting into the exhibition venue. It's more about the characteristic or the, stru the physical structure that make um my my that that uh, um, uh, determine the outcome and um yep a closer look of the neon and these are some 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 red that doesn't have anything and oh maybe i talk about the last show that it is a dual exhibition that I, this is also in some shape but this is an artist run space named 100 feet park. And um, so as you can see, this is a whole different exhibition menu that this time it may have some similarity with the bunker show before, but um, the content, I would say it is uh, different. 
and um, the treatment of the whole space is different too. This one, as you can see, they are all white, but indeed the original space is not like that. And um, the floor is like those uh, um, plastic, uh, brown, uh, wooden, wooden floor like that. And um, I try to use white tarpaulin to cover all the space. And because it's a dual exhibition, these paintings are not for me, it's from the other artists. And um, what I've done is the floor, and also I have put three stack of paper into the space, like this, one, two, three, in different height. And um, the paper is images of uh, photos that I've taken uh, within the uh, old district, I would say Sam Shui Po and um, uh, Jordan and also Mong Kok, these area in Hong Kong. And the original photo is like this. When I uh, come across in the street that I see, oh, it's a really strong uh, structure that uh, creating some geometric form by the steel bar. And at first I didn't really think of the reason behind, but just taking photos of it. And later on, when I really think of, oh, why it would um, be like that in the city is um, because of the old building is being uh, demolished. And so it need the structure to make the adjacent one to be safe, that it won't collapse. So in this uh, work, I try to recreate the, 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 recreate the situation of the building to, to be stand by itself. But I try to use the paper as, as a, a, another form of, of um, make it similar to a building. And um, these are the images that I print, but at the first one, I have paint. You can see a little bit of the steel structure in the image. And um, the first one, I have paint this area away by, by, by my uh, painting. I mean, I just cover these part to let people think that, oh, there is nothing exists in this area. So this work actually allow the audience to to take the paper and then you can, I mean, you can take the first one and then you realize, oh, the, the rest of it has the structure, which is the image is different. Yeah. So maybe, I think the time is is better for us to to maybe check more oh, or if okay. you have any i think uh, maybe we can open the question uh the uh, the the question and answer part of the visit if there's anyone from the audience who would like to ask a question uh to kitty maybe um let us know or like put it in the chat box there is the chat box. Yeah, there's a, there's a okay, chat Okay, maybe box. I, I start <laughs> sharing my screen. Or, yeah, but we, you know, I, we can see the chat box here. So. so feel free to either unmute yourself to ask a question or you can insert the question in the chat box and we'll meet it. Uh, yeah. Maybe just um, talking a, a little bit more about how the images of the structure appears and also like how you install works inside the exhibit, inside a space, you, there's always like this tendency to attach um, your work to the structure. Um, I'm just curious if that is something that's intentional, that you want to maybe inject your, yourself to the structure itself in a way. You mean um, what 
I've been produced. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yes. I mm. I would say I like to do that. I think is somehow interesting to interact with a space. And um, for example, so I've been uh, I have one work that. Originally, the space have some uh, metal pole um, that I have made a mirror that separate into different pieces that install on the metal pillar. Mm. I kind of like this, uh, like taking the elements from the exhibition area and let it become a part of my work. So, but it also gives me some constraint um, that sometimes is difficult for me if I don't have an exhibition ahead or, or I didn't really have an exhibition venue. So what do I do? <laughs> Do we have any question from um, from the audience? I have a question. Hi, Ingrid. Hi, Hi this is Ingrid uh, Puyichu, uh, also Hong a Hong Kong-based um, curator and writer and a fan of uh, Kosin Tung's work. Thank you so much for that wonderful uh, discussion uh, and to everyone. I had two questions. One was um, if you had, it was there was uh, any significance to the uh, colors that you choose, uh, it, particularly with the bunker piece where it's very specific blue and I know it repeats uh, through like the, um, the broom, I think, and it's of course the only um, color that's infused into an otherwise quite, you know, uh, white and clean and um, sort of minimal um, backdrop. So I was curious about that. And then uh, my other question is, uh, seemed like through your talk, there was really this kind of playfulness with, uh, when you started off with this idea of the photograph, and then this idea of um, the record and recording. And somehow I feel like no matter if it, it's like a um, photographic record or it's a video recording or it's some kind of recording of the site, uh, th there's some continuity there. So I just, I was curious about how you think through um, choosing your response, uh, whether or not it's always a site or, you know, picking objects and things like, when, do, when is it a, a, a choice of the venue, a choice of a sculpture, a choice of the video? Like, I'm just curious um, if there's any difference in terms of how you approach the project. Yeah, the, the project, I guess, based on this idea that there's this kind of continuity of somehow making um, a record of the whatever location you're, you're in, or you that you're inspired by, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm not quite sure if I fully understand the second question. You mean um, uh, uh, when I am doing record, you are yeah. saying after the exhibition, I do documentation or, or you are saying um, somehow you're taking visit? Yeah, no, I guess. Yeah, I'm also just thinking through because I've just heard you speak, so I'm sorry if I'm being unclear. Maybe it's my uh, question of um, of of um, taking stock, I guess, in whatever way. It seems to be an impulse you have, and no matter what project that you're doing, of uh, taking taking stock of a, a site or a situation. So I'm just wondering then. Um, I guess it's part of the process, how it ends up as, you know, the types of work, that, the different types of work that you do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope I can un answer that clearly. Just um, when I go, yeah, yeah, I always need to have site visit before I really working on the space. That always it is the, the physical structure that may, I, I, indeed need that for 
for for me to think of the work that I am going to do. Otherwise, I am feeling uncomfortable or not secure enough to to make a work that is um, unknowing about the space ahead. So um, I think is yeah, it's more about physical uh um like how the structure of it rather than objects or yeah somehow it may be more related to the city also or the location also and that answers my question it's through first a physical engagement with the site that then yeah. through which you quote unquote record it in different ways through your work yeah sometimes i, I have to like the, the my, best way like, go back and um, take a few more visit that, um, yeah, I need the moment for, for um, inspiring me, <laughs> inspiring me. <laughs> or sometimes I would um, prepare the show by making my own sketch up or floor plan. That really helps, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Got it, and that makes sense. About, yeah, about the, the color. And um, for examples like the bunker one, I would say I am really having the intention of making everything um, under the tone of white and blue, bluish, and a little bit gray maybe. And um, because I have the imagination that I want to create a clean room, and also I want it to be like an operating room. So in order to, to create that feeling, that is the, the color I would choose, I would say. Like every, every color has its own characteristic. That, yeah, I can't think of using, using red or <laughs> using others. Great, thank so you. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank so you. I, I think we have two more questions uh, from the mm. chat. Yeah, so the first okay. one is from Chris. Can you see the chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, the neon sign come from the shop. Yeah, yeah. No, normally, I, I take some reference of, uh, you know, the in, in maybe more, more commonly seen in Western culture that you can see the restaurant, maybe they have the neon side of uh, open 24 hours. So I've taken uh, these open 24 hours as a, as a reference for me to um, design my own neon. Actually, it's not design, it's just a copy of those <laughs> simple lines and then also, um, yeah. So that's a question from uh, from Lam Yunwa. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So that that's the answer to the question of uh, where did the neon sign come from? And then I guess second uh, question from Pauline. Uh, she's asking about the bunker. Is there a reason why you chose to use secondhand items instead of brand new ones? Um. Because I want, uh, there is pre, uh, previous owner of those items. Uh, my target is to find domestic items. And um, on behalf of that, I also willing that it has the trace of, of the, the usage of the, uh, the people who have used it before. And um, yep, so when I have to choose whether I, I am going to buy a brand new one, it, it never, never come to my mind that I yeah, have to buy a new one because, mm -hmm. yeah. You'd like to have, um, or at least like you, you like using materials that kind of have some sense of history attached to them versus 
just buying something out of a store, I guess. Uh, I would say it is depending on the project I'm working on. Mm. For Bunker, this one, I intentionally um, willing to have secondhand items. Yeah, because I want to, to, to yeah, having the, the trace of, yeah. And it remind me more of, um, I can imagine there is a previous life with, uh, about the owner and the object. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is another one. I always wonder why you are interested in uh, those like things like people you should overlook when and how you got in. Um. I don't know. Somehow, uh, uh, uh regarding uh, he told me question, as you can see in the uh check check box. Um, talking about industrial object, or actually, I think it's quite quite of a a uh, character of Hong Kong, and um, maybe people get really familiar with it, and therefore I don't think it is quite special. <laughs> but um, I usually interested in man-made object that when I am thinking about man-made objects, that people usually have a function of creating them. And somehow when I, for example, taking pictures from the street, I always um, taking pictures of objects that is, maybe people use it not following the original function, or it create a, a more, uh, a, a, a different different style of using it and that, that make things more interesting mm -hmm. yeah and also because of this man-made object it always has a function that people um, I would say it has a little connection with the expectation just like people expect how to use it and um, so it is in a way that telling you uh, what kind of style uh, lifestyle that our uh, uh, I mean the people living in the city would like to have and do we have time for some more questions. Let's see, he told me response. She might. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's, there's another one and it's probably the last Are oh. inspired by you going out and documenting and seeing people around the place you're in? Um, I would say I am not a really research based artist. <laughs> Basically, I based on my own personal experience. And also, um, some, uh, I always create my work yeah, based on my own ex uh, experiment, uh, experience. It may be come from a daily routine. For example, I always take a, uh, uh, the same bus route every day when I have to go to, uh, go to work. I work as a part-time uh, art teacher to teach the uh, kids. And um, every time I go by the same bus route, and somehow maybe I come across something different than the, the, the different things that I see may be giving me some inspiration of 
producing something new. So I usually find the unfamiliar things within the familiar <laughs> scene. <laughs> What's the always you you always kind of like uh, look at the things that are odd in a in a familiar setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, if I, for example, if I am documenting the uh, construction site, that I have to, oh, I have to target that I would like to take some photo around the area then I may do more research about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it always depends on um, different works. Sometimes it may go deeper, sometimes it's just simple, <laughs> I would say. Because it's somehow a little of my, uh, um, a part of my work is quite conceptual based. Do you imagine not living and working in Hong Kong? Uh, I would say Hong Kong is quite important to my work. And um, oh, there is one, uh, one, one thing I can share that because I've been to a residency before for three months, I uh, am having the residency in Norway and oh, at first, I was just seeing the pictures of the the uh, the house or the the residence location. Oh, I think it's so beautiful, and and yeah, just because of this. And um, after that, after I been there, I find all that is really difficult for me to create work <laughs> because. When I am facing a really beautiful scenery every day, I don't think it is suitable for me to to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, the the environment is different. Then it would just directly um uh, affect what I would do. Maybe because of when I am in Hong Kong, I always see something problematic that somehow it becomes a, a resources that you you may need to use your work to to kind of a release something. Yep. Let me ask the last question. <laughs> <laughs> um because you've been talking about this um, daily observation and uh, man-made objects you kind of sensed um, like day by day or from your regular routine. So just curious, what is your recent discovery? What Recent discovery? Yeah. Um, how to say, because since, I mean, in these few months, I've been taking photos, but I sometimes come across like more and more um, surveillance camera. Mm. Mm. It's so obvious. And um, of course, um, I've been taking pictures of um, the, 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 the fan that is being removed that right now you can see the street is still keeping a chain of sometimes it's yellow chain and then sometimes it's uh, a plastic one sometimes it's in white that it has temporary me to uh, keep the function of because it's only half the pole left and yeah you can see the change is linking them but in these one month or one month or two, um, the government started to install back all the, all the, uh, I think it's iron or uh, I don't know, the, the, uh, uh, the fan, mm -hmm. the fans. 
uh, yeah. like like those um, stanchion uh, around the recreational area, like the playgrounds. Those things. No, 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 no. Just um, normally you see in the row. Oh, I see. Okay, got you. Yeah, and it has a really strong. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that. Yeah, <laughs> that you cannot remove it easily. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. <laughs> so just like every day you, you, you see the things is secretly being repaired. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank. Yeah, thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. And thank you That's for cool. all the audience, for all your patience. Yes. Thank, Thank you for, for joining. Joining. If you missed maybe like the first half or something, we're going to upload the recording to YouTube later. So check back and check Kitty's uh, website. Um, stay tuned on her upcoming projects, exhibitions, and uh, follow Kitty on her practice, please. And also thank you our uh, moderators. Thank you, Christine and Gun, for um, the great moderation tonight. Thank yeah. you, Angie. Yes. Thank All you right. very much. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, Kitty Christine. Yeah. yeah. Talk soon. Okay. Yes. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Rafi.